two of us, if, if, you, if folks are willing to, to, to talk a little bit, um, is to try to really get the ball rolling again. You know, we're post-COVID. We had some, some good turnout on some nights last uh, end of last year when we were able to get the, the open forums going, and then some, mm -hmm. some nights that were, there weren't a lot of folks, which is understandable. Um, they're, they're, they're late evenings. But a lot of it is... Um, some of it's like what I call comfort conversations. You know, if there's stuff that's going on in the community that's in the in the, the district that people are hearing about that want more information on, mm -hmm. this is a good place to, to talk about it, to ask about it, and everything is open to be, be discussed. Um, and so usually we kind of start out there. Um, but one of the things that I'd like to do a little bit, um, as well a little bit later, is just kind of get a list of priorities. Mm -hmm. So things that folks feel that it's really important that if I'm going to do some education with the community about what the district is working on or, or what's happening in the district, you know, what should those things be that, that, that people should know more about or are interested in that you're hearing. Um, and so I think those are the, the two biggest things. Um, and then the, the last piece is that these uh, open forums is that when we start to discuss bigger, you know, potential protocols and policy changes and things like this, this is the, the, the best place for feedback. Um, I also do run listening sessions with the staff. Those are usually, uh, you know, right after school. Um, between the different buildings to kind of get input from them and then um, typically hit at least the RUHS, the student leadership group that's here, um, you know, to try to draw on as much information as possible. But in terms of just like general questions or thoughts or concerns or things you, that you want to, you know, learn more about and nothing's off the table. Yeah. Well, I think something you just said registered for me. I feel like sometimes parents or community members are so quick when they have a concern or a grievance, they go right to the school board meeting. And the school board meeting is really not designed to have a good back and forth in information sharing and learning, whereas yeah. these are. Yeah. So I think I just, just hearing you say that was very useful. I think getting that message out there, which, yeah, we should use these forms more. Yeah, the, it's, uh, since people may be watching, the, the school board meetings typically, um, you know, folks will come to open comments. Sometimes that's by design. Mm -hmm. um, because open comments one way, um, and so it gives them an opportunity to talk about what's on their mind and and, uh, and kind of get things off their chests. But because of the open meeting laws, if what they're talking about is not something that's been posted on the agenda, the board can't take it up, and so that's why they don't respond. It's not that they don't care, but it's it's that piece. But typically, the the person who's kind of best in the know is usually you know me or one of the other other building leaders. And so we're, we're usually the best ones to, to kind of talk to about that. I so. think even if it's on the agenda, there seems to be instances where the board just won't respond. It's, yeah. If you're trying to air your grievance, it's incredibly frustrating to yeah. just be one-sided. And people are going there. I, some people are, are knowingly going there knowing it's one-sided, but I think a lot of people don't. Right? Yeah. If you haven't gone on a regular basis, you know. You know. So I think something like this is great if people use it more. So would, uh, would uh, communica uh, communication kind of explaining think help or? I don't know what would help, honestly. I think it's just people's knee-jerk reaction is, take it to the school board. I don't know why, but mm. I think they, they, that's what's known in the community as the next step. And I, yeah, I think this should be the next step. Yeah. That kind of. And these are meant to be. One of the reasons that they're public in there is because it, it, it should be kind of low-key and formal. Right. So Everybody's here. Everybody knows what people are saying. And there was a really good example before you got here. Bethany was explaining how somebody posted on Facebook about the new schedule. And, you know, it sort of started to go negative right away because they didn't know why it was done. And Bethany was able to share the logic behind it and what's good about it, and it turned the conversation around because yeah. she was part of meetings like this. Yeah. Um, so that's a good example. Or if people came to these things more yeah. often, they wouldn't need to go to the school board meetings, or if they, or they would know what to go to the school board meetings for. Yeah, no, it's a very, very good point. But one of the things, it, it might help, and I, what I'll try to do is craft a communication to just go out and try to explain the differences and the, and the rationale, you know, why one versus the other, which I think is a good point. Thank you. I wrote that down. I was going to say that. <laughs> yeah. And one of the things I had said earlier in the um, beginning was that um, I feel like um, I still care about the school, but I don't have my kids in the school. And I feel like the minute I didn't have any kids in the school, I had no idea anymore what was happening Definitely. in the school, except for the negative things you see on Facebook or, you know, whatever. And I, I don't know what the best way to do it is, but trying to find some 
way and you you propose things in French for forum and stuff so that's great but that was like a, this meeting is coming up or something and not a, and sometimes it's informational too but a way to sort of get the information out like this is what happened this is what was talked about these are the things that are happening or you know if there are big changes to like a schedule thing like write an article about it or talk to somebody about it or as we were joking earlier I think right when you walked in about make a TikTok about you know something <laughs> yeah. that people will see so that the um i think um prior to covid i was in a group that you uh, i think maybe you were one of the people who pulled it together i can't remember but that group with other people from the community trying to figure out how do we make a better connection between the greater community and the school and make it feel more integrated and yeah. I feel like that um, was making really good progress, and then COVID came and you know knocked yeah. it out. But I think it was a really valuable goal yeah. to to do. I, I feel like having people. Who, I mean, the, the school. What's happening in the school is still important to people who don't have children in the school because it affects the whole community. Yeah. Um, so it's important to to try to figure out how to bring community into the school and the school into the community. Yeah, no, I, I had a fantasy, too, that, uh, you know, with the things that folks, you know, post on Facebook and social media, that with the open forums, you know, if they're hearing stuff and they're not sure about them, that hopefully they would come in and, and you know, ask questions about it. Because, like I said, everything's on the table. Um, we, there's, there's not much we can't talk about. Um, just so that they're hearing, you know, full context or if there's misinformation out there, we can kind of correct that. But um, a lot of it is, uh, and actually you're, you're bringing up some, some good points about if we do a better job of kind of communicating what it is that we're talking about, you know, that might spark people's interest to make them, you know, make it more desirable for them to come in. And so those are some things that I might hit the three of you up for tonight is, you know, what, what would those things be? You know, there's a, there's a million things going on in the district, some that folks know about. I'm, I'm sure you heard about a lot tonight that's happening at the high school. Um, but what things do you think would be a good draw that people would want to talk about? I do think that helped last year. I remember when you put out some topics. Uh, one thing I asked about in the earlier meeting was um, the homework policy. Yeah. Just looking for an update because I think it's a great idea. The draft that I, early draft that I saw was great. And it just seemed well thought out for flexible for different age groups, but it was really ramping up as they got older and made them more responsible as they got older and just got them used to the idea of studying and working outside of the classroom, which I think is important the older they get. So uh, I was really interested to see that get published, hopefully. Sure. Yeah, so the, the, the current plan on it is is that there were a good group of folks that were very supportive and folks that weren't, um, and typically with, with anything that, that you work on. Um, a lot of it I think th that people didn't realize was it wasn't the idea wasn't okay it's homework every night it's mm -hmm. we've been doing a lot of curriculum work um, we've been identifying what are called foundational standards you know what do I have to learn in this class so that I can be successful in the next class that comes um, because those are things we want to make sure that the kids learn really well right because that's what's going to carry, carry them through and allow them to advance as they go through their careers and also what the teachers were working on this year um, when we started off school was okay thinking back taking a look at the test scores taking a look at our own kind of internal um, assessments that we've done what are the weak areas, you know, and all these things that you've taught the kids over the years, what are the five or six areas that, you know, you taught it, but the kids didn't really get it well? Mm -hmm. And so what, we're, what we've talked about and how we've kind of set up that homework policy is that, yeah, you can do more homework if you want to, but at a minimum, you should have a nice, well-designed assessment um, that connects with both those foundational standards and those target standards. So you might be talking 10 to 12 um, good assignments a year. Um, and they're really important because they do two things. Um, they, they help the kids with the rehearsal, right? I've learned it, and if I go over it again once or twice, it's going to stick with me, so I get that retention piece. Um, but the other thing that it does is if they're well-designed is since these are areas that are really important to make sure the kids learn, the teachers are getting the feedback right then and there that, yeah, you know, we just we did the instruction, the student did, did, did the work. I can see if they got it right here and now. And I know it's okay to either move on or, or, or I've got to go back and do the work. So <coughs> the group that seems, <coughs> excuse, excuse me, most open to it is math. Um, and so 
to slowly kind of introduce it as opposed to overwhelm everybody all at once. Um, the idea is to roll it out with math, um, get them up, get it working very effectively, move on to ELA, and then move on to science, and then maybe go beyond that, um, depending. Um, and so that's kind of where we're at. So the, the math, um, it will be discussed uh, the next time we have a math uh, meeting, which is coming up um, early October. Um, so yeah, it's, it is on target. I yeah. like the regular reading that my, my youngest is a fourth grader and <clears throat> just wasn't reading a lot on their own. So it was, I like that she's getting into a habit now as part of her, her teacher's homework this year. Yeah, which is good. And I, and I think some of the discussion, um, even though we're, we're starting more in math, I think it sparks some teachers to think, hey, you know, this is something I can do anyway. Um, I've noticed with Ryan, my um, youngest student's a, a junior this year, you know, he's coming home with homework, you know, most nights. And it's not, not like enough that it's killing him to get it done, but it's enough that I know that he's, he, he's getting the foundations down, down really well, which makes me happy. Jackson's so. carrying a backpack, which, <clears throat> which is a whole new concept for my grade, apparently. <laughs> and one night, computer upstairs because I was doing homework and I almost fell out of my chair. Wow. Yeah. I would say with the kids, like I, the younger ones, I do like that they're asking them to read. I feel like for my child and even myself, because I've been so out of the homework routine, like it would be great if they would send her home with an actual book and like said amount of pages only to like take away that piece of like, now I've got to find a book she can read and like, you know, how many pages do I make her read? You know, that way I just kind of have like that targeted mission for her because um, reading has been a true struggle for her. Um, and she, so I also struggle because I don't really know what I should be having her read right now because yeah. um, I don't know where that ability is, as, you know, and I struggle to help her at this point with it because she's far enough behind that I'm, I'm running out of ideas where I don't know how to help um, with that. So. No, I've I've got the note down. It's a uh, it's actually something that that I've seen some schools do is that um, they do have a list of books by grade level, you know, that yeah. are really good for the students, and there's that's easy for them to produce. Yeah, just to um, know. you know, and this has been several years. That I feel like teachers have been sending home like read twenty minutes a day and have your parents sign off on it. Like, okay, great, but. I recommend you tap into the librarians. We have, we've adopted a new FOLET system, and the FOLET system um, allows teachers and librarians to access titles based on reading level and interest. So if your daughter has, like, maybe has a high interest in female protagonists and horses, right? We can uh, choose books that have those elements and are at either current reading level or a, strike, a, a little bit higher, mm -hmm. like to challenge. And um, I would tap into the librarians for help on that. What's it called again? Follett. 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 And honestly, it's available online through our website, <coughs> but not with all the detail that the librarian and teachers can access. Like, so if you knew the name of a title, you could see if we had it in stock right through our website. But you're looking for basically a reading list, right? Like yeah. here's some. Well, I mean, I kind of want the book in her back. Sometimes it's 7.30 at night. Yeah. <laughs> right. This is happening. Yeah. So, yeah. The, um, <clears throat> I've had really helpful help from the librarian at Kimball. I've just brought my daughter in there and kind of started talking out loud of, oh, this is what you like. And, yeah. <laughs> and she just jumps right in yeah. with suggestions, or you just ask her and she'll come up with some suggestions. Yeah. yeah. Good. They're, they're, yeah, they're really good. Uh, the uh, kindergarten students and our first and second graders go over quite frequently. Um, to have have reading sessions over there and get ideas in terms of books. So yeah, no. um, yeah, that's no, a really good idea. What what other things do you think folks might be interested in to, to talk about that get them to come in and get them engaged in, in what's happening in the district? I sometimes think like <clears throat> putting topics out that are like <clears throat> before decisions are made, obviously, so yep. that people do feel heard and they have that chance to come in and be heard. Um, you know, that committee that Dave and I sat on last spring here at the high school, like they pitched that homework schedule to us. And I know Lisa took a lot of feedback from us on that and the cell phone policy <coughs> and all of that. And um, it's 
surprised my son when I was like, yeah, I knew you that was coming, you know, the cell phone policy. And I said, and I voted for it, you know, and he was like, what? You know? <laughs> um, so I think that just made me feel good about all those things yeah. that happened. Um, and if people maybe had more of an opportunity to, to share their feelings before they felt like it had been decided for them, um, they could just feel better about it and get behind it. Communication and education is key for the parents as yeah. well as um, the students. So. And I know it's hard. And again, I kind of go back to like, if you don't vote, you can't finish. You know, yeah. so like if you don't show up to these things and learn, then yeah, I was gonna say maybe Sorry. there's no yeah. problems in the district this year because right. it's empty, right? <laughs> it's been, um, to be honest, it has been unusually quiet. Mm -hmm. And so you know, we keep saying that, and then it's like, boy, we hope we didn't just curse things, but mm -hmm. it's been. It's been unusually quiet. Some people are tired. Too. You know, they're tired yeah. of kind of, the, I want to believe they're tired of the rift. And tired of fighting? Fighting. Yeah, I, so. I hope so. Can we get <laughs> on a good cause? And, um, yeah, there's actually, there's, there's, there's been a lot of good. Um, I mean, some of the things that as we go through the, the, the cycle through the year anyway, you know, we talk about the, you know, where the students are scoring. We talk about, you know, how we're rating, you know, relative to the state. And we're actually doing quite well. Um, and that's despite the fact that, that we came through the COVID years, we were one of the few districts that was advancing things as, as you know, in the midst of COVID um, while the other districts were dropping. So we're not in bad shape at all right now, um, you know, relative. Um, I think a, a topic might be, we covered it a lot from ground tonight, but just how are some of these new initiatives going? Yeah. So, I mean, it's probably a month away now, but I'm hearing good things about the cell phone policy, about the schedule, um, if we're not, putting it in people's face, they might not know how well it's going. They just hear it's, oh, it's changed, it's new. But it seems yeah. like some of those things are going well. And are there things we need to tweak? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and around the athletic expectations. Athletic too. eligibility, habit scores. Um, we heard some good things about vape sensors and mm -hmm. yep. the positive that's coming out of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of it, um, you know, we had a, had a really strong discussion um you know it goes back to the idea that you know there you know what what is the climate you know and what are things that can be done to improve it and when we did the analysis it was this idea that five six years ago seven years ago the state came up with this idea that you know it should be restorative practices you should be getting away from traditional discipline um, restorative practices or you know if something bad happens you know the students sit down they talk it out in a restorative circle or an affinity group um, but the problem that that incurred it almost seemed like in some cases it worked really well but in other cases we were actually enabling more of the behavior we were trying to pre prevent um, and so that's one of the reasons that we're kind of shifting the gear a little bit on the expectations and the standards and what we're going to hold kids accountable to and I, I think it's going to have a good impact overall um, that's the hope, but we got to keep checking in and see what the data is telling us. So. I'm excited so far. I think there's a sense from students and families that the school's cracking down a little bit this yeah. year on behaviors, and that's a good thing. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. I have not heard one complaint from parents about these new initiatives that have been put into place. Yeah. And the, the students will be happier, the, and, and the, the teachers, their lives will be easier. Um, and so it, it, I think it's going to get us a good place. And it is foundational. You know, if we, if we get that under control and the kids are feeling really good and really comfortable, um, it's just going to help them even more in terms of the academic side, side of things um, and just feeling good about themselves. I think really celebrating the athletics and the fact that they are saying they're going to have a musical again this mm -hmm. year and there's that many kids participating in the arts. I mean, I think that's fantastic. And just the more that we can all rally around those that are doing that and just kind of because I don't care if you do it or not you can still come support it and cheer it on and be a part of it and the more of the community that can have some ghost spirit and pride and um, get behind all these kids it's just all the it's all the better I mean it's I should have asked this at the earlier meeting with Lisa but um, there was a senior project last year that Layla did around um, just school morale, school spirit, she did rallies but I know she also set up an organization that would live on with other officers, and yeah. I'm curious if that did actually survive and is active yet this year. What was the nature of the 
pep rallies yeah. mostly. It was like yeah. school spirit. Uh, but a lot of school spirit, yeah. like blue and white day, or dress up as certain yeah. something that day. Just a lot of school spirit stuff. So, Dances. so, so I think it, it plays into the theme. Um, so it's standards, expectations, and recognition of excellence. And part of the recognition of excellence is this idea of, of establishing new traditions, where we're just we're celebrating what the kids are accomplishing and what they're doing. Um, what that could be, the, those definitions of what those new traditions could be have been left up to the, the principals to develop so that it's kind of specific to the schools and, and, and the needs of the students and what's going to impact the students at most, but that's an expectation that they are developing those this year. Um, the other expectation that is on the principals is, is bringing back a true student leadership um, team. Um, across the district. Um, the big expectation last year, which it sounds like you were a part on, was to start to get the advisory councils up and running so that they could do the vetting and start to have the discussions about the changes that were coming. Um, so they, they've got a lot of good things that are going. But if there's ideas on, on what traditions, like, you know, one of the things they're planning is if that field house ever gets done. It, the is, floors look great. Yeah. Is to I took a, pictures the other day. Yes. The maple is in. Did they get the, did they get the, I, I saw it like three days ago. I don't know if, if they've got the coatings on. No, yet. I haven't seen any coatings. Uh, yeah. yeah. And something like I had suggested in that group last year was, you know, we've settled on like this new imaging for the mascot, you know, this yeah. new gym floor coming in. Mm -hmm. Like, let's celebrate this. Well, I'm this stealing is, your ideas as you're talking about This them. is from yesterday. Yeah, I did get in there. Unveiling ceremony. So, yeah, I mean, no coatings. Like, yes, at least yesterday. Like alumni and like tap into them. Alumni have money in their pockets too. Like, Get some donations going. And I've had my students ask about what what is the middle of the floor going to look like? Like even people who don't go here, like they're curious what the it's, painting is going to be. So the the center of the floor is going to be the RU symbol that they've used for years and years. Um, it'll be dark blue lines on the two ends. Um, it'll say ghosts. Um, and then we have the artist already lined up uh, as soon as they can get in there once a lot of the, the, the remaining floor work is done to actually put the mural back on the wall that the students have decided on. So You should cover it with a big sheet. Yes. That's actually, yeah, that's yeah. a good idea. Just do, pull it down I just as like think a reveal. Bring the community in as much as possible and just like let those kids be proud of being the ghosts again um, and let them build that spirit and build some shirts and I love playing in a party. So. Um, and but just build that spirit back up. I mean, the community needs it. Um, there's some people that are don't have kids here, and like they live for coming to basketball games. Like that's literally what gets them through the winter is coming and cheering yeah. these kids on. Um, and I don't feel like that's been there quite like it used to be. You know, when we were here, and um, I just think that would be great for these kids. Um, so you can get some. You can get some world-known band to come and play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody got any friends that? <laughs> get the kids. They said there's a rock band playing yeah. down here. Actually, <laughs> we used yeah. to have Battle of the Bands back then. Was that auditorium or was that field? We time? did it in the gym. Like they cleared off the yep. the weights and they put the kids up there and you Sounds paid familiar, to come yeah. to it. It was and it was Battle of the Bands and they battled it out and you like voted and somebody won and yeah. Actually, if those are, that's, that's a tradition. So are there others that, that folks remember from time here that have gone away over the course of time that were kind of fun and quirky and? Cheerleaders, no. <laughs> <laughs> just like, just the rallying, like at the different events, um, I think was, you know, cheers that they had and things that would happen. But I do, that actually lacked, I felt like when we were here um, around like events, there was never any sweatshirts or gear that people wore and I thought it was so cool when I came back after being gone for so long like wow the high school actually has sweatshirts now like um that was pretty cool but um all the sports teams used to do a skit yeah. at the bonfire yeah. they're doing that again a <laughs> couple weeks right the eighth or yeah. something it's happening again um yeah pep rallies around the teams did they do them three seasons or was it just for the it, remember it seemed like if somebody was going to something big and even if it was like before the what's the theater event that happens in the fall like the competition like short skits they did in the or that spring well that's something that disappeared too yeah, that can come so back they yeah they used to do like one around that and then like if the teams were headed to the playoffs we always did um, big pep rallies around that 
So were the rallies more um, just celebrating and cheering on the teams, or did they do like competitions between the classes? No, it was more like around the teams, but I think incorporating something like that it was right. You know what I meant? Donkey basketball. <laughs> <laughs> not, not on the on new our, gym floor. Not on the new gym floor, but the donkey floor like boots. The donkey basketball was really fun. That, that was, was a big that fundraiser, that was, and it was, was so fun to watch the teacher, like because the teachers would be on the team, and then there was like yeah. students, and you rode donkeys and played basketball. And it was I remember that. Yeah, for sure. For sure right. Many many yeah. years ago. Um, I don't know things like that that just bring in so the the big discussion um, and we got to find a way to actually there's two big discussions we got to find a way to kind of connect the community on and get some feedback on the first is this building um, which includes the tech center um, and the second in conversations with the town as they're trying to get their police force back up and running there's a lot of pressure on the school for a school resource officer so I'll just throw those out there with no other piece on it and, and get a feel for what people... The resource officer, like what would that look like? Um, so, ti that? so typically, I've, I've, the two districts where I was a principal, we always had one. They were awesome to work with. Um, they serve a whole variety of purposes from counselor uh, they do a lot of the what I call the the community policing. They're just getting to know folks, so they get an idea of what's happening in the families and whatnot. So if they're ever called and have to show up, they they have a better way. They know how to better approach um, a situation. Um, the kids tend to build a lot of trust with them, so the kids share a lot of information on things that might be happening in the the community. Like this is where they're buying drugs. This is, and so they they get that information that way. Um, but it also helps us out in here as a part of, as we're trying to rack up, wrap up the standards and expectations, you know, if we get a kid, um, which after COVID, you know, with the trauma-based behaviors, if we could get, get, gets out of control that we can't bring back, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes having the officer there helps us to kind of control and contain. Um, and so they, they serve a lot of things. They often will talk in the health classes, especially when, you know, they get to talking about, you know, alcohol and drugs mm -hmm. and things like that. So that's someone who was in the police force? They're the police active police. officers. Okay. Um, they're, they have special training that they go through. Um, typically, you know, the police will hire them and then we contract them directly from the police department. Okay. Um, and it could be any police department in the state. Um, the, the trick is, is finding the right individual that, that's a good fit. I remember hearing Lisa explain last year how before <coughs> the town police was disbanded, being known to the students that they're having like a mental health crisis or something, they're much they're a known quantity that they're much more approachable, and it's much easier than having an unknown Vermont State Police come yeah. in and just barge and say, "This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to cuff the kid or whatever." Yeah. Like, yeah, having a local known face oh. is a huge and they can help. do state police like when the Randolph um, police force was not here right after things were kind of falling apart a little bit with Orange Orange County Sheriff. Um, state police won't do things like safety checks. So if we have a student that says, you know, I don't feel safe going home or I'm, you know, got some suicidal ideation or my parents do, you know, we didn't have the ability to call anyone to actually go and make sure that people were okay and get them connected with the services that they needed. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's a real important um, service uh, that they provide. Um, but yeah, I'm, I've always been... And, and a lot of it was because my experience it was so positive with the ones that I've worked with. I've always been very pro. Um, typically, when I brought it up in um, conversations at open forums um, a couple of times over the years, um, it's mostly negative, um, and it's hard to kind of suss out why. But again, it's also not a representative group, and so it might be something that, that I need to put a survey out on. But I'd like to get some communication out about it in a nice way so that people know, you know, these are the possible benefits, the pros and cons, and so they can make a, a good kind of information. How many decision. schools in the area actually have one? Because I, that's what I was thinking listening to you talk mm -hmm. about it. The only real thing I've ever heard about school resource officers is all the negative stuff, and mostly it came yep. from uh, the only school that I know for sure that had one in the area was Lebanon High School, and there was a lot of, there was a lot of back and forth in the Valley News about whether that was a good thing or a bad thing and a lot of people felt like it was yeah. a bad thing and i don't remember if it if they ended up uh 
ending it or not. I can't remember, but so that yeah, it would be interesting to know. From you think that schools. might be shading some of the opinions and right? But even just if like, yeah. are there other schools in the area that yeah. are doing it and, and hearing from them about what their what their um, experience, experience has, has been? Um, because that was a pretty negative one. That Do you remember but, why? Things were negative, like other than I don't there's some cost involved, obviously. You need a but, budget um, spot, but like, and I remember there mm -hmm. being negative reaction last year, but I can't for the life of me remember like, why people would have a problem with having an extra resource right. available for our kids in the school and for safety reasons, at least in the case mm -hmm. of an emergency. Yeah, they help and, out with the Alice trainings, and you know, they're also security. You know, they're making sure the doors are secured and locked as they're wandering around. They, they, they do mm -hmm. quite a bit. And it so, some right. families sort of um, send a message to that the police are the enemy, and it right. provides a really safe and trusted adult in the school to undo that negative thinking about, mm -hmm. right? Um, and also, I anticipate the number of them in Vermont schools is going to rise very sharply this After year. After last year. Yeah. Because um, the Agency of Education just released the opportunity for grant funding to fully grant fund um, this person for this year. They've just released it. So if we write this grant, we would have full compensation. And I anticipate at least 10 to 20 districts across the state will say, I'm going to jump on that. And at least we can try it without any cost and see what that looks like. Yeah, the only one off the top of my head that I know that had one recently was Montpelier, but usually it's a budget it's a budget issue. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll, I'll talk with Libby about what her experience. Um, I'm sorry, David. Do you want no, to speak? Okay. Okay. I, just, um, one, I was going to say the same thing almost, but this uh, the school resource would they bounce around the different schools? I assume their time because yes, um, you know they. The places that are most active, the place that's most active is usually the high school and the tech center. Um, but the nice thing is that if they are on our payroll, mm -hmm. right, because our tax money comes from the three towns, they would serve all three towns. It would be a full time? Full time. Good. Yeah. And they yeah. could also do truancy officer work because currently our principals are our truancy. And so it's v difficult for a principal to, to like go out and do a home visit, mm -hmm. you know, because they have all the students who are present mm -hmm. um, and we don't have currently a person who who does that and you got to have somebody who can bring the paper paperwork to court because we're required after so many days to, to report to the court and then to actually be there for the hearings and whatnot and I assume um, they'd be allowed to be allowed to be armed while they're here yeah, yeah. and uh, I think a lot of it my guess is you know to kind of add on to what, what, what Heather was, was saying was, you know, we had that swatting incident last year where mm. they had the group that did the robocalls into half a dozen agencies across the state saying there is an active shooting event going on in, you know, these 15 schools. We were one of them. Mm. Um, and so in that case, you know, we didn't have Orange County Sheriff at that time nor the Randolph Department to show up. And so it was the state police that, that showed up eventually. Um, again, limited resources. Um, they did an exceptional job responding to such an incident, but we didn't have a heads up. So, you know, we had two officers coming through the door with, you know, assault rifles out and, you know, it can have an impact. Whereas if we've got the officer here, they've got direct communication and can really assess what's happening and whatnot. Um, but. That topic will bring people out. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, Lebanon uh, did vote to keep their school resources. Oh, okay. nice. But it was a close vote, 800 to 650. Was that like recent or was that in the past? Last year. Last year, yeah. But I know the debate was happening for like a couple yeah. years, it feels like. I think a lot of it, you know, I, I may be mistaken, um, a lot of it is if it, it, it really comes down to getting the right person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, because uh, like I said, I, I worked with two very exceptional um, officers. I think Scott's laid the groundwork for that and mm -hmm. Loretta almost did before she went to Royalton, so. I feel like we have a good yeah. kind of yeah. piece with that. And I think when Scott was gone for that brief time, like that was felt. I know Lisa shared that. Yeah. Um, so hopefully. Well, Loretta was, uh, she also, what, what do they call it? They don't call it DARE here. What was the, what's lead. the, the lead, lead program over yeah. at the elementaries? Yeah. yeah. She used to do that. It was great to come in and see that, yeah. you know, the, the celebration at the end. Yeah. Uh, um,
yeah, and so that that's uh, that's one of the things that that'll probably be one of the hot topics um, this year, especially as we the budget season starts to kind of kind of grind up. And Heather's been our grant person, and so she did identify the grant that's out there. So um, we can try to go that, but it, it it'll be hard to bring somebody on unless we know it's going to be sustainable over time. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other piece, um, you know, that's open for discussion, um, kind of wide open at this point in time is is the state of uh, this facility. Um, we were, you know, rated by the state. This facility is, is in terms of being closest to the end of its useful life of any um, building in the state. Mm -hmm. um, we've had issues that just come from age at this point in time. I mean, it's between 50 and 70 years old, depending upon which part of the building that you're in. Um, we talked about kind of, you know, potentially renovating a piece at a time. But, you know, I think the, we learned our lessons with uh, the field house. You know, we, we got in there and they um, started pulling up the, the floor um, and the water encroachment that had leaked into the, the concrete under there. I mean, it literally, you could pick up the chunks of it and grind it away in, in your hands. And then you had the, the biological stuff that was growing in there at the same time. And so any time that you hit that stuff, you know, the cost of, of getting the work done goes up exponentially. Um, and so we're in this weird kind of place where we've got a lot of major repairs that we sh should be doing because of the, the age of the building. Um, but it's like, okay, should we be putting this kind of money into things if we're potentially thinking about, you know, uh, replacing? And then what would the replacement look like? You know, do we keep all the district the way that it is or... You know, do we consolidate, you know, everybody into one campus or possibly two campuses? Um, you know, so those are the kind of discussions that, that we're having. We're um, going out for a, a request for proposal. So we're checking in um, with uh, a, an architectural company that's got some engineers on staff um, that have kind of put together what it would cost to do what they call a survey, you know, come out, take a look at things, say, yes, you can rebuild on site, and this is how we recommend you do it. This is how we recommend, given your academic needs, given your student population, given what the projected population is going to be, this is what we recommend um, for a building. Um, if you redo the building because of the new efficiencies that you're going to have, this is the cost savings that, that you might have that would offset, you know, paying off the bond. Um, and those sort of things. So um, my push has been with the board, and they've been, been supportive so far, is to at least get the survey done because then we'll have real data that we can go out. Yeah, if we do X, it would cost this much. If we, you know, renovate it, it'll cost this much, and these are the pros and cons of each. If we consolidate everything into one building, this is what the, the savings would be. Um, this is what the impact on the taxpayers would be. When you say consolidate everything into one building, do you mean... All of the, uh, when you say in the district, Brookfield, Braintree, Randolph, Elementary, like all of the yeah. school, I mean. And that's a tough, and that's, so that's not a, that's not, I want to be very clear. That's not necessarily what I'm espousing for, but what I'm saying is, is because we have this once in a hundred year potential opportunity, we should look at all the possibilities. And so, you know, one of the possibilities is we have a central campus that's right here, um, and then we convert RES into uh, the tech center. And so you've got everything centralized here, got the tech center over there, um, and this is where all the students would come. Again, not saying I'm recommending it, but I'm saying that's one possibility. Um, Braintree is, as a building, is actually in really good shape. Um, Brookfield, for folks that are, are up in the Brookfield way, I think folks are familiar with the water issues up there. Um, they are not able to be remediated. Um, we drilled the second well after kind of going through the protocols. They told us to try to repair the first one, which didn't work. And the water in the second well was even worse than the, the first. And we had the state geologist out there, you know, telling us where to drill and how deep to go. And um, so there's a, that chronic water issue out there. Um, we're going to put in an osmotic filter to at least get the kitchen connected to get pure water from from the well, but there's problems with that too. It's a, a fairly costly process, and what it does is you get the pure water on one side, 
you get all the concentrate on the other side, all the stuff that's in it, and some of it's radioactive um, and things like that. So we have done the testing for radon up there. We're, we're, we're clear on the radon. Um, but that concentrate potentially is toxic waste that would have to be disposed of in, in, a, in a special manner with a, a cost that goes along to it. You know, our interim piece is we've been sitting with um, bringing in the bottled water, you know, so they got the drinking water. You know, the, the water's fine for flushing toilets and things like that, but that's about it. Um, it would be fabulous to, to uh, consider if any, if, you know, like if you're dreaming big, <laughs> to consider um, um, incorporating in some way an, uh, the idea of um, having if you have to build something new, um, some kind of community center involved and having it be more, you know, a building that could be used by the community yep. in more period of time or whatever, I mean, incorporate, I know the tech center used to have adult classes yep. um, that I think were pretty popular, um, th thinking about all of those different options that used to also used to happen, but the, the ne I feel like the need for a community center in yep. this area is really big. There's not really anywhere ideal to put it, but to, to to really be able to bring people together and offer options for people, non-sports non related options for people after school yep. um, in addition to the things that so are already offered. So in terms of a vision for a community center, which a public school should be, what would you think be the most critical need? Is it just classroom spaces for people to use? Is it is it the athletic fields? I mean, if we were to build a turf field with a, you know, a nice rub core track out there and lights, you know, would that be something that people would use? What would be? I don't know. The first thing you'd have to fix around, if you were going to build it back here in the same place as the traffic flow. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that a, would be that's a part critical. of their study. <laughs> yeah, that is a part of their study. Um, but, I, yeah. you know, I, I just see it as like, well, you've got a, the media center, you've got the theater, whatever you do. Like, um, that would be yeah. your big, yeah, your big... Um, would Chandler be upset with us? Uh, depends on what you do. I'm not saying, yeah. like... <laughs> yeah, I, I think a running track would be used. I think and a track would be used. I know you said non-athletic, but honestly, a group of guys have struggled to get any kind of regular access to use the basketball yeah. gym, and the town doesn't have an indoor yeah. rec facility, yeah. so, like... Yeah. Well, I don't, don't mean have, not to have sports uh, stuff. Yeah, well, I'm just saying. I'm saying there's a need yeah. though, I think for like there's an indoor a, basketball yeah, court yeah. in the town, <laughs> and so we struggle trying to get in. Like BTC's often busy because they've yeah. got teams yeah. there. And winter time, this facility is used because of the teams. And like mm -hmm. sometimes we can get into the elementary school, but it's hard because of janitor availability or the policy or just a, such a tiny little. Gym. Yeah, last year the janitor piece was. Yeah, it was, yeah. And it's a small gym. It's not like we can't even play normal five-on-five -five basketball right. there. So it's like the town needs something, but probably couldn't afford it on their own. But maybe mm -hmm. maybe there's an extra gym that the school gets well, to Well, and if the town was involved and if it was a community center and if it was doing yeah. that, it could be, be also combined with the rec department. Yeah. And it yeah. could be like a, a all integrated, more support unit. I right. think when you present this, just having the different options and then all the data as the pros and cons behind each one so yeah. that people feel like they can see you know they're making an informed decision and it's not just oh we just want to build a new school yeah. um, I mean coming from Gifford we have a hundred year hundred plus year old building that we have hobbled along and we yeah. had a choice a while ago that like we were keeping that building we had to it's and, okay I've got ideas for Gifford too <laughs> 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 you know, because we originally wanted to build up on the hill but we instead decided we couldn't leave that big footprint in town and um, so they've had strategic plans of just how to maintain that physical plant and um, one thing we present to the board like with our energy committees is like you know if we put this set amount of money into <coughs> this new lighting system it's gonna we're gonna pay it you know mm -hmm. it'll pay for itself within six months you know and they're just like sure go ahead they look yeah. sign away um, and it's just partnering with yeah. efficiency Vermont um, so I think having pulling in those aspects too like what yeah. would the heating system look like like what would be well, the, the, vi the vision would be the heat exchangers as much as possible um, and then, you know, solar and try to get most of the HVAC. We're, we're getting to a point, um, it is getting warmer. Um, I don't know if the trend is going to continue forever or not, 
but every year the fight um, within especially the two small schools, actually Randolph Elementary was hit too, was the mold. You get the humidity in there, you know, you got good ventilation, but it doesn't matter if the air that you're pumping through there is 90% humidity. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've been starting to, you have got a good grant uh, yeah. air conditioned brain tree, and, mm -hmm. but a lot of it, the reason they, they allowed us to do it is because they know the mold problem. So it, keep, it keeps the mold out of there. I kind of couldn't believe that Randolph Elementary didn't have central air, just given what a new building. Right? Yeah, that's a, it's a quarter century now. Yeah, yeah it's... What? Yeah, it's a quarter century. 30, 30 years, it was built in 1995, right? Yeah. It's, Almost 30 years, not quite. Yeah, but it's, it's still a beautiful building. But it, yeah, those, those sh should be retrofitted. But with a new building, you also get all the efficiency savings. You, mm -hmm. get, you get modern, efficient heating and cooling. You know, if you connect it with the solar, um, depending upon how much the state would actually let us generate, they used to have a cap on that. You know, you might be able to get, you know, 50% to 75% of that cost covered. Um, one of the problems with this building is that it's just, it's a giant sprawling, and that's not energy efficient. You build up when you want energy efficiency, right? Um, and so, yeah, there, there, there's, a, there's a lot of discussion there. But the, the biggest one and the hardest one with the town is going to be, okay, you know, do we want to consolidate or do we not? And, and I want to be able to say, if we don't, this is what your taxes are going to be, and if you do, this is what your taxes are going to be, and that'll, be big. yeah, and and, and 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 it should be. be, yeah. Giving up local elementary schools, no matter where you are in the country, it always is. Um, but you know, if the if the cost savings difference isn't that much, then it's not a big deal. But if it's tremendous, and it might be, you know, that could change minds. Um, but. But those, so those will be the two big ones this year that we'll be talking about, at least in the district level. And the principals are doing an amazing job, um, especially on the expectations and the standards and getting stuff in place to really get the kids kind of connected, you know, doing what they're supposed to and, 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 and achieving the way that they should. Um, not to swing topics, but I have a child very ready to go home. Yep. It's done with practice. But um, I did just want to briefly discuss the elementary school uh, mascot change at Randolph. Um, I know that you know, Ms. Robinson put in the, one of the first newsletters that came out um, that the change was kind of made it sound like it was happening. Um, and that just kind of startled me a little bit because I was like, well, this is like the first I'm hearing of it. Like, why are we changing the mascot? And so I did reach out to her and we went back and forth um, several times. And uh, I guess I don't have any deep affection for the wizards like I did the ghosts <laughs> being, you know, an alumni. But because um, I came from the Braintree Catamounts. Um, but in, yes. in elementary school, I don't feel like it's it's as deep as it is here. Yeah. Um, but it's just the fact that like I felt like all of a sudden we're just gonna like open this can again of like no matter what we pick, something is gonna bother someone. I mean, and I've been a little bothered that my daughter in third grade, some of her friends came home and said to mom like, well, my teacher told me today that it's because of the wizard from. Let's plan. You know, I'm like, you're in third grade. <laughs> like, why is that even being talked yeah. about and why are you talking about it? Um, my daughter said, well, they, somebody threw out the ravens. I think I want to be the ravens. And I was like, well, you know, I think of death when I see a raven. Like, I just, I guess I don't understand why. Because I know the, I the state passed the law last year that has us re examining. Right. Yeah. But I felt like it was portrayed in that, like, this is happening. Um, versus we're talking about it. Um, and the, my understanding of the state law was that we talk about it, it doesn't have to change. Yeah. Um, and I just, I don't know, I felt like coming off the heels of everything that happened here, like, really? Like, yep. we're going to go down this road again? And I don't think it will stir up nearly the controversy that it did here. But to me, I look at it, again, as like a taxpayer of like, it's taking resources. Like, you're spending time thinking about this. and. I know you have bigger fish to fry, and there's like my kid needs to read. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, there's things like that that I think on a personal level, and same thing with like I look around the school at open house the other day. I'm like, this wizard is everywhere. Like, there's yeah. so many things like money. They're gonna have to time and money to change all these things. I'm like, why? They have the cutest song ever about the wizards. So, you know, there's just little things that I just I don't know. Like, let's just focus on bigger issues. But yeah. No, very, very good, very good points. Yeah, and I think you know a lot of it is the discussion around it. 
and yeah. we'll see what comes out of the discussions. I just don't feel like it's been yeah. a public discussion, really. I mean, it sounds like it's being talked a lot about amongst the kids there. Did they have their advisory um, this board? Was at, well, this was at the elementary school. I don't sit on an advisory for the elementary school, so I guess I don't. It was the PTO right now, an active PTO. Right. Yeah, because usually that's yeah. the, the reason that those, those boards were put in place. I can check with Melinda. But the reason that those boards were put in place was to do that kind of vetting and have those discussions. And, of course, they're open to other people who want to come in and talk to on those nights. But I can follow up a little. Yeah, I didn't know I could go to the church. I'm not join another. I know. Right. Um, there's a movie night coming up. I think, that goes through, so. yeah. I think the PTO reps will be there. Yeah. Um, so I'm happy. I just felt like it was really put out. That just practicing? No, I can't join I you before. I'm just, I'm just I visiting. I can't right. join. <laughs> but it was, we were being told it was happening versus it's in discussion or mm -hmm. funny coming. It, it's yeah. a topic big enough that I felt like it should have been. More and more people should be involved in this. Yeah. Exactly. No, nope, makes sense. And I, I, I'm happy to talk, check in with Melinda because yeah. I don't know the full details. So. Yeah. And yeah. not trying to make rift of it either. But well, we talked about perceptions and the other yeah. one. There's a perception in the community that I've heard is, here we go again, one or right. two people complained about something that's yes. maybe a little bit on the level of silly side, and now oh. everybody has to talk about it. Everybody has to change because of one or two people who complain. Mm -hmm. that, that's the perception. I'm just sharing exactly. the perception. Nope. Yeah. Where sometimes you can just say no to one or two people and be done with it. <laughs> so, so what? So it, sa it sounds like on that topic that because um, I had talked with the during the strategic planning this year about you know starting to identify you know mental models right beliefs that people have they could be true they could be not but it's just it's the beliefs that people have within a community. And part of that is, um, you know, as, as folks earlier were talking about, you know, the videos and getting the good stuff out is being able to put together a, a, a PR plan. Um, so what were some of the things that, that came up or some of the things that didn't come up that are more kind of district related um, to be able to, to, you know, connect with and maybe that'll help us, like I said, develop our PR plan and how, how we kind of we address them. We talked about the new schedule. We talked about the cell phone plan. Yeah, yeah. these were more high school focused. More high school focused. Yeah. Yeah. Homework policy, when that finally is finalized, might be a good one. Yeah. Um, I can't say I know as much at the elementary school, which I feel bad because I have a daughter there. But I, and they do send out the newsletters and they kind of talk. But I guess yeah, I'm trying to think of like what would be the Power School app we talked about. Yeah. That's again high school level. But is that is that positive or negative in people's eyes? It was positive for me. I had a really yeah. negative experience for six years prior to this, <laughs> and now all of a sudden the well. last two weeks have been great. Like I have an app on my phone. It notifies me if my son's late, if he gets a grade recorded. I know it like that. Um, and the teachers seem to be actually using it. So, I mean, it's early still, but the past awesome. six years were not, it wasn't That's happening awesome. before. Yeah, there Good. Was, there was never yeah, one of, one of the pushes that, that we, we talked about this year, too, again, is trying to, you know, it, the expectations aren't just in terms of the kids, but it's also the teachers. And so the teachers are doing a really good job of actually, you know, assessing the kids and whatnot, but when they're recording the grades, you know, this one's doing it in Excel, and this one's doing it in another right. spreadsheet over here. And then only when the final grade is due do they actually go in and they put it in PowerSchool, and so you lose all that resolution and detail. Mm -hmm. So over the course of the year, we're trying to standardize that and get all the teachers to use. So that, that should be coming. At the um, elementary STEM, farm to school, yeah, I science of reading. Yeah. There's a lot of cool things we could highlight. Yeah. Yeah. An active PTO, I think. Yeah, there um, we go. That's a good one. Yeah. They're going to get field trips going soon. Um, yeah, there's lots. So these will be the things that you know, we can have them focus on for the writings, right? Mm -hmm. well, like, yeah. Years ago, oh, you I have an intern. <laughs> yeah. I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. But yeah, no, it's good. This is great, and I hate to leave, but he's Oh, not a problem. And I, and I realize, I to to oh. realize that folks were here an hour earlier. And I, uh, but. I apologize that I brought that concern to the school board before coming to you, but I did panic because it seemed <laughs> like it was like the end of September, like it's happening, and then like talking to a friend on the school board, like she didn't know anything about it, and I was just like, I just kind of panicked. I felt like that was my last yeah. like, chance to have it come out in a bigger, and I didn't want to take like a social media aspect because I felt like a lot of parents weren't reading that newsletter and didn't. Yeah. Um, and so I just wanted to apologize yeah. that I had to take it to that so quickly, but I kind of didn't know what to do. But I was glad Dave brought up the like educating people on the steps and 
the roles of the school board so that they know. I think yeah. people don't know that they can't respond to them. So I, I appreciated right. that Hannah like said that the other night um, in the meeting that like just please know we can't respond to you. Um, well, they've got a really they've got a this quirky. They're they're under the policy governance. Yeah. And, it, and, and there's a lot of good to it, but my concern, and I express this to them a lot, is you've given me too much power. No, nobody should, you know, we're supposed to be a team here. We're supposed to be working together. Um, and so usually it ends up getting deferred to me, um, which, which is fine. So I'm happy to sit down and talk. Big thing is I've got to get myself a little bit more educated on it by going over and kind of talking with Melinda and, and seeing, you know, what process they're using and, you know, what they're, what they're up to. And I think people are deterred from getting on the school board also because it is so governance like they just kind of feel like they yeah there's that impact that people feel like if they get on a school board that they have um so that I, that's just what i hear like oh, and, in, they, and under their policy governance it's true and one of the things i've been pushing them on is i want them more involved in things mm -hmm. And I give, I give them an awful lot of credit. I, there, I've, I've been through version, you know, 102, 030 for school boards. Mm -hmm. They've always been very intelligent, kind yeah. um, people. Um, version 30 that we're in now, um, they're actually taking the suggestions. They're building their subcommittees. They're doing some of the work. Like in a district, I'm not supposed to be the one that's presenting the budget to the community. You know, I'm th there to recommend and say, hey, these are the things that we need. You gave me the parameters, and this is what I came up with. But, you know, they, they're, they're usually the face of that. So there's a lot of little things like that, and I don't mind doing it, um, but it, it would help them get out and connect a lot more with the community and hear, hear what they're saying. But so they, they got like four subcommittees now that are standing committees, which is awesome. Uh, they're actually doing giving me feedback or trying to set up a system, give me feedback. Because my only feedback in my six years here is I do um, these executive limitations reports and an end report. And as long as they approve those, then that means I'm doing okay. But there's no talk. It's just, yep, yeah, we accept the reports. And so, but, but is, are there things that you want me to do on your behalf? You know, tell me that. So yeah, it's been it's been interesting, but they've been a really good crew to work with. I, I, I couldn't be more more tickled, but mm -hmm. I'm also happy that they're 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 picking up some parts and pieces. Yeah, yeah. They're good people, and it's important. But I stopped going because these these, are, these meetings are more valuable. Oh yeah, I, I 100. <laughs> yeah. Well, this this yeah. will have more of an impact on what happens day to day. Yeah. Um, because I do need the feedback. Um, we get lots of, of wild ideas at times that look really good, and, and, and these meetings help ground it. Um, and they also, you know, if we do have some good ideas, they also help enhance it. Um, we get some, some things that we can kind of incorporate to help things along. So, well, I think the more we can advocate, you know, the more educated those that do come are and can advocate yeah. out in the community. That's just true. They also offset some of the the social media parts and pieces because you get people that are in the know who you know when people are bringing up oh i heard this it's like well that's not really quite yeah, yeah you know it's in the ballpark but not quite there so it's helpful but no i appreciate and uh thank you yeah and thank you very much